All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Marianne Pruitt, who is in Anchorage, Alaska. How are you doing, Marianne? Great, John. It's so nice to be on. Thanks for having me. Yeah, and as I was just saying before coming on air, here is uh, Marianne is our first uh, first guest from Anchorage, Alaska. I love firsts. It's always great. And uh, Mary uh, started her career in media, working in senior sales executive at some of the largest national media outlets. And then she founded Mosaic as a way to provide niche expertise experience to agencies and marketing departments across the country. And we've got a really exciting topic to talk about today, and that is generational marketing, how to market each generation as its own. And I'm, I'm really interested in talking about this because maybe it's just my perception, but it just feels like we have so many different generations uh, in the workforce today or different generations to, to market. You're almost like more than ever. I know that's probably not quite true, but it just seems that way. Actually, you're right, John. Uh, for the first time in American history, we have five working generations. So we have five generations in the workforce. Uh, that means that's spending capabilities and spending powers at five different generations. We've never had that before at the full capacity that we have now. So we're actually in a time frame in American history that's unique and that we've we've known is coming, but it's here. And at times we're actually headed into six generations. We're getting we're getting on the cusp there where we have our traditionalists that aren't retiring, our baby boomers that aren't retiring. And then we have our teenagers that are headed into workforce and headed into that um, demographic as well. So it's it's very interesting and fun time to be around in American history. Yeah, absolutely. Quite challenging. I, mean, I barely understand my own generation. Like <laughs> five of those. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. So 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 that's so let's face it. I mean, that's a massive challenge uh, for a lot of organizations, particularly if if your product or service isn't. Uh, targeted at a particular age group, right? Say it's one that it's it's uh, it's targeted at a business uh, a business solution or whatever it is. So how do you how do you market when all these different generations like receive like to receive information and be marketed to probably in very different ways? So at times we really just have to get back, and not at times, really frankly, right now we have to get back to our basics of who is our ideal customer and who who is it ideally that we're targeting. Um, and in today's world, what an opportunity we have to, when I first started in media, we actually were just like, oh, it was really broad. We could say adults 25, 54, that's who we're targeting. Uh, now in today's world, we can say a woman that's 42 years old that drives a minivan that has three kids that has expendable cash um, and you know all the other elements that go with it. So the pieces that happen on that front are actually more important to us as marketers to know and to see the opportunities that we have. Um, so it's very fascinating. So we, we actually have to go back to the basic of who are we targeting? Who is our ideal customer? And what are the personas and behaviors that go along with that ideal customer? No, no, absolutely. And, and, and then I think it's, uh, it, it's fascinating because, uh, you know, once you do that, you may find obviously that your target customer, that you have a number of different personas to, to market to. So this, let's, let's talk about the, the different generations. I mean, are there very distinct traits uh, in how to market to say, you know, your millennials or your whatever they're called today, your Gen Z's. <laughs> <laughs> your Gen Z's, your DigiGen, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. All, all the above, right? So uh, we actually, over the last 18 months, have learned quite a bit about these consumers, and we've seen consumer behavior shift and habits change. So there, there's a multifold tide that is happening in a shift of behavior. But to go back to your point of, I can't target the 15-year-old boy the same way I do the 78-year-old woman. And they're both now at a place where they have expendable cash and that they are people that we're marketing to. So if they if people are lumped into one demographic back to the adults 25, 54, uh, they, yeah, we lump them into that demographic. It's OK to break it out. And now we can and actually our budgets are going to be more efficient in that um, in breaking it out that reaching the 25 year old and the 54 year old separately is an OK thing to do. Uh, so it, to go back, though, to the consumer behaviors and the tactics that we've seen shift, our older generation overnight, when the pandemic hit, we should have had a 10-year evolution of social media consumption go up, and it happened overnight. 
we had everybody over the age of 60 all of a sudden want to be on social media, want to get that, that became a new source for them. On the other side of the spectrum, we saw the younger generation start consuming traditional media as if it was something new. All of a sudden they're listening to local radio, they're listening to local, they're watching local TV news. Why? Because they wanted to know what was happening in their backyard, but they were acting like that was something new. Like, oh my gosh, the local radio station's gonna tell me how many, you know, how many counts are in my town? What are the mandates? Oh my word, all this information. So it's very fascinating that we saw a total shift in consumer behavior around media consumption. Well, that's that is that that's extremely fascinating. It's almost like wow. So th the younger people discovered legacy media, whatever, and the older people discovered social media. It's quite yep. that's quite an amazing uh, that's quite amazing happening. And I do see it. I mean, I do I I, I do see it myself. I think you know people. Uh, you know, older people have become so much more active and and engaged in in social media for for a number of different reasons. So I guess then that becomes its own kind of challenge because you've got all these, you know, newer older kind of people who, let's face it, social media had kind of left behind yeah. uh, and ignored, and now you now, have to figure out how, how to use it. Exactly, and so and a recent study just said that we found that our younger demographics are actually going to social media and online to kill time. It's not oh. to go get the news, go get the information. They're killing time on social media. That's what they wanna do. They wanna, you know, it's it's really just to fill the boredom that they have in their life. Where our older demographics are going to social platforms to get information and to get news. So it's, the consumption is different and the purpose is different for the generations as well. And so that's what we have to keep in mind as we're marketing towards that is, who are we targeting? It's going back to that and splitting those up and saying, okay, if I'm reaching somebody in an older generation, I want to give them information that is useful and helpful and provided in a way that is more of a news platform or content, something that is readable, something that they like. If I'm looking at the younger generation, it's to kill time. So I'm actually wanting to look at video and I'm wanting to look at various things that are quick, easy, 10 to 15 seconds, they get information, they catches their attention, they click for more information. So those are looking at how we're actually reaching the demographics differently. They may be on the same platform, but we need to use different points and ways to reach them. So how about it, then how about then the generations kind of in the middle, right? The ones who are, you know, stra maybe straddled. Those of both. us that are right in the middle. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was just actually saying to a friend of mine uh, the other day saying, do you ever feel like we're in the sandwich generation where we have our older parents and we have our kids and we're kind of in the middle going, okay, you know, so it's the older millennials and the Gen Xers that we're stuck right in the middle. We are, you know, we truly are a sandwich generation and where are we carrying this balance? We've got older parents to take care of or older parents that aren't retiring and we have children who are in school and we're now one thing that has happened over the last 18 months, the pandemic has made us homeschool parents or has made us, plus we have to have our careers, plus we're entrepreneurs, plus we're doing everything else. So we are carrying this balance in between everything. Um, and how, how are we, it's actually even more crucial in reaching this middle generation because now I'm gonna, now I'm gonna go into this a little bit more. Who are we as the sandwich generation influencing? We're influencing all the other generations. Our parents are coming to us for advice. Our kids are coming to us for advice. So that, how, what does that mean for our marketing? We have to just not, not only is it extremely important right now that we are having messages that help and that give useful information for the sandwich generation of actually solving a problem. Help me solve a problem. Help me curl my hair faster. Help me get ready faster in the morning. Help me do whatever that piece is that it's gonna save me five minutes. Those are the things that you're gonna, you're gonna find that are more helpful. The help part for the sandwich generation is just crucial right now. Yeah, and then how to reach that, I mean, how to reach us too, because let's face it, like we're, as I said, some of us, uh, you know, we're digital tourists, right? So we came mm -hmm. from the last, um, yep. or whatever it's called, we came from the last, and maybe we've adopted it and we're like fully in the middle of it. Maybe some people haven't, you know, there's, I, I just think there's, there's a lot of differences in this kind of sandwich generation between like, uh, you know, how we consume information. Yeah, 100%. And the way we consume it 
is more of a way, we actually want a synopsis, quick, brief. They, our lives are too fast. So those of us in the middle, we don't have leisure time. We don't have time to um, slow down. We don't have time to think things through. We have to move fast. We have to move quick and everything has to be efficient because we're spread so thin. Um, we are probably, frankly, the most stressed out generation and the generation that is burning the candle on both ends and feeling that that level of stress. So the way we consume media is in a quick, I need to know the news for the day. I need to know it quickly though. I need, I can't, I don't have time to read 10 different articles. I need to know quickly. I need, I need my Apple news synopsis of these are the 10 top headlines. And frankly, that is how our generation is consuming media and news. Um, I don't have time to watch an hour long program. I have to have it quickly. Uh, the videos actually are something for us too, because we're, we're in that generation where we remember things before mm -hmm. the internet. We yep. remember before things were on computers, but then at the same time, we've fully adopted into it and we use technology when we want it, but we're in that, that in between of how we're consuming. Um, it's actually a very fascinating in between. And it's interesting to see, cause I, I would argue that at times we actually have more expendable cash and more expendable resources. We will spend that extra dollar if it saves us five to 10 minutes. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. And I think, um, yeah, we're, we're stressed and we're busy. We're also highly distracted, I think, too. Um, and I don't think we're very good at organizing our organizing our time or our focus. So I guess then if you're selling to people in the sandwich generation, you've got to kind of be to the you've got to be to the point and you've got to be solution oriented and it's got to be it's got to make sense immediately. Yes, and we have to, our message point to them has to be 15 seconds, no more than 30 seconds. It has to be quick and it, you're spot on. We are distracted, we're spread thin, we're all over the place. We're hustling right now, This we're in the hustle. We're in the building our careers, we're in the, even if we're in the older end of millennial and younger end of, of Gen X, it doesn't matter. If we're in our 50s, it doesn't matter right now. It is that is truly where uh, we are distracted and we're moving quick. We are moving very fast and trying to we have to have our message point to us delivered quickly in a way that we can consume it quickly. And it's I, I honestly it's a it's fascinating of how many differences and changes we've seen just in these generations in the last 18 months. Yeah, and I and I find even with the uh, you know with the youngest generation coming through, like the teenagers now, like I even think of my son and like his friends, is that they they go really deep into the subjects that they're interested in. Oh so goodness. you know, like my son works out and stuff, and he's into supplements. But I mean, he goes down into the ingredient, watches video, he does absolutely before he purchases anything. I mean, so they do an incredible. Whereas me, I'd be like, yeah, this one looks fine. I'll try this. But they 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 get really into the weeds on the stuff that they're interested in. Yeah, it's it's actually quite interesting to say because uh, I can think of my oldest son is the exact way where he's really he's athletic. He is you know headed on the path of collegiate sports, and everything is methodically thought out of what he's going to eat, what he's going, what his workouts are going to be like. It's very, but it's researched for hours of how much he's putting into it. Um, where we are quicker, we see an ad on Instagram. You're like, yep, that solves the problem. Go. And I'm going to purchase it. And I, okay, yeah, that's fine. And we're probably the most retargeted and remarketed to generation because of the fact that we just click. We're like, okay. And we, and honestly, and I, it would be fascinating to do a psychological study uh, and, a, and how we as a generation remember before the, before yeah. internet and then now and how our brains evolved to where we are now. Cause we move so quickly in that, but you're right. The younger generation, we see them researching. So what's very fascinating about this um, is what we have found the older generation. So my parents, your parents have an influence over our children. So we may be in the, in the, in the sandwich generation, but our parents have more influence over our children than our grandparents had over us. We see that grandparents actually were more involved. Our generation was very, it was very important to us that our parents were part of our children's lives that they were involved in things. And frankly, when we were younger in our careers we, and our kids were little, we had to hustle. They were helping us. They were in those, you know, even if they were working, they were helping, right? 
So what we actually, I think we're seeing in this younger generation are traditionalist habits of research, of understanding a subject, but they have the tools of digital in front of them. So it's very fascinating. It's, it's the encyclopedia generation teaching the younger generation with, okay, yeah, but you have, they have Google, they have the other <laughs> tools at their fingertips. So they research like our parents researched and we react because we're just like, click, 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 click. Yeah. So it's very fascinating to see how these generations actually have intermingled differently than where we were with our grandparents. Yeah, that's a that's a that's a fascinating point. And you just reminded me we used to have the encyclopedias in our bookcase <laughs> back too. home, back home in Ireland. And when I tried to tell my son about saying, yeah, that's how we had to look up stuff, look it up in the, look up the dictionary, look up the encyclopedia. And he looks at me like you're I, you're, you're crazy. That, that like, what is it? My father happened. still has our encyclopedia set. Like it's mm -hmm. the my my dad was, you know, he's an educator and he has that library set, whereas kids. He, we would bring up a subject or we bring up something and he'd say, well, I have a book on that and he'd pull yeah. it out. Right. And now it, for us, we were like, okay, whatever, dad, like you have to, yeah. we have to read the book and we would, I love reading. And like, honestly, frankly, mm -hmm. I say that as my love, but our kids consumed, you know, grandpa saying that in a different way than me as his kid would be like, yeah, whatever. No, they consumed it like, oh, pop, that's really cool. Like, that's different. That's not, I mean, it's totally, it's interesting to see how this has intertwined generation over generation. Yeah, yeah. No, that's true. I mean, the grandparents are interesting, whereas we're just silly dinosaurs who don't understand anything. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Like, oh, mom. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So it really does, it really does, uh, it, uh, it really does present that weird challenge, right? As these uh, as these younger generations come into the workforce, and and we just to the point we're talking about, like maybe instinctively because we think, oh, like they're all like TikToky and all this kind of stuff, that it's oh they just need trite and clever and simple. But as we were just discussing, no, yeah, you may need to catch their attention, but then you need to have a lot of detail behind it. Yes, because they uh, they want that detail and they want to succeed and. I'm not sure if if your kids are the same way in this realm, but I, I look at my older son, he, they're very driven. They want, yeah. not only do they want the research of it, but they have set out a goal and they are gonna look back and see what's gonna drive them to get to that goal. And so, yes, we have to get their attention quickly, but then what content are we backing up to get them to, okay, why, why should I use that vitamin regimen? Why should I use out use that workout regimen? Like it's very, very, very specific, and they are re researching every little detail. It's almost like they 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 own it. When they there is a subject that is interesting to them, they are going to just research it until they know everything about it. Oh yeah, it, it, it's it's fascinating. Yeah, my my son's like it's absolutely fascinating, and I think it's a little. As I said, I think it's a trap that we need to be careful not to yeah. fall into. Is this idea of well, they're very superficial and it's all, yes. you know, TikTok dancing. Um, because to be honest, frankly, I mean, I could even see bo their boredom setting in with all of that. And that's that's not feeding their, their need for, for real information and to feed their goals. And what we're seeing is with that, we see them switch from social platform to social platform. That's to your point of, okay, I'm bored with that. I'm done with that. And so, yes, the because they want their brains actually want to be fed information. They want it. They just want it in the way that they consume it best. And they know that they know that this is the subject that they want to study and they're super excited about it and they're ready to get into it where, um, but then if, if the, the social platforms, that's why we don't see young people on Facebook like they used to be, mm -hmm. because they're like, eh, yeah. whatever. Plus old people are on Facebook. That's what they think in their mind. Like if you ask them, oh, Facebook is for older people, which cracks me up. But that those are the things that that's where their minds are. And that's why it's easy for social platforms to evolve for them and to change quickly. That's why they go from Snapchat to TikTok. They go back and forth, Instagram, because of the fact that it's like, okay, you just haven't kept my attention. The research part's not there. My brain's not getting fed the information that I want to feed. Yeah. And I think the last part is that they really, they really uh, latch on to experts. They want to find an expert in something. So if you want to sell to this 
generation, you need to have real expertise and you need to prove it. They're not going to take your, they're not going to take your word for it. They're not going to take your work history or your credentials or whatever. You really need to prove that you're an expert. Yes. yes. And they, they want to know why you're the expert and why the information that you're giving them is different. And if it's giving them a different piece of what that subject is that they love and that they're interested in, if you're opening up another box of information or opening up a different like little path for them to go down. They get excited about that. That's something that they are, they cling on to and they'll just keep going and digging and digging and digging. It, it is so interesting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you'll get found out pretty quickly if you don't have the depth of knowledge, but the, on the flip side, if you do, they will, I mean, they will latch on to you and they will follow. So we talk about uh, brand loyalty. They're, they are, they are probably one of the most brand loyal people out there. They are. And what's so fascinating about that is when I started in my career, you had hundreds of brand impressions a day as a consumer. Now we're in the thousands to tens of thousands of brand impressions a day, right? Where then we have a generation that is loyal to brands more than any other one when there's more brand impressions out there. So it shows us as brands and as marketers, we absolutely have to have our message point to break into what they want to be and where they want to go and where what is that message point to why we are important to them. And to, because once you do have them, they are loyal. They are an extremely mm -hmm. loyal generation. Yeah, no, absolutely. And um, and then for, for us, it's like, I don't know about you, but Instagram ads, oh my goodness. I mean, those, I, I have to really watch myself because every Instagram ad almost I see, I think, wow, that's fantastic. I mean, those are so addictive. <laughs> they really are. And that's honestly, that's how you reach our generation. Uh, I was literally just talking to a friend of mine the other day and she was like, she goes, if I buy one more thing on Instagram, but that's what we do. We, it's like, oh, click. Oh yeah, no, that solves my problem. But as marketers, we need to know that that's where the sandwich generation is. And we will just quickly click on it and just go for it. And we don't care. Oh, $35. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's the problem. Yeah. Cause it sounds so great. And then they say, Oh, limited time only from $5 million down to like 15 bucks only yeah. for the, and I'm like, Oh yeah, it probably was that price originally. Well, and it makes you wonder if it's because our generation was the generation that saw the telemarketing on TV. Oh. That was the, you know, the buying whatever this product was. And it was those hour long paid commercials. Remember those that mm -hmm. it was like, okay, yeah, no, for a limited time, for a limited time, for a limited time. And those got into our brain as kids. And so now it's the Instagram is a 30 second version of that. Know, <laughs> it's it's, like, it's okay. incredible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. incredible. And I, and I do sometimes take a step back and go, my God, what is wrong with me? You know, these things are like so addictive. <laughs> they are. They're very addictive. <laughs> Well, listen, uh, Marianne, this has been like fantastic. All of Marianne's information is going to be below this video. But before you go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and Mosaic Agency. Yeah, so we help brands with their media strategy, just like we talked about today of how to reach each generation the way they are. Uh, we help you in figuring out what the plan is and then help carry out that plan for you. That is our expertise. Media more and more has become an expertise and how to target our individual customers and how to how to get them and get our message in front of them so that we are happy to help and at any point I love to just answer questions and talk to people all the time I'm all about relationships but yeah you can reach me at mosaic.agency forward slash contact that comes directly to my email absolutely fantastic and I would encourage you to check it out uh, because you know five generations to market to possibly heading to six yeah we're going to need some help. Exactly. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, thank you again, Marianne. My name is John Gold, and I'll see you all for another interview really soon.